Wunderbar. I'm using this old rotary telephone to call Christian Knob, who is the chief design officer of IWC, because he's going to have an interview with us now, but we have to call him first. Christian, are you ready for the interview? Yeah, we are set up. Okay. Are you ready? Okay. Then uh, join us, please. And yeah, okay. Okay. Great. We are waiting. See you. Welcome to Watch Advisor World. Watches are the stars, but today on your screen you do not see only watches, but also Christian Knopo is the Chief Design Officer of IWC Schaffhausen. Welcome, Christian. Thanks for having me, Alexander. Why did we do that setup with the 1970s? Because we are going to talk about the watch that IWC Schaffhausen will launch end of March during Watches and Wonders, and it is the legendary Algenera. Before coming here, I have to tell you people, I was so excited. And when I this morning saw the watch, I, I almost got a heart attack because it is so beautiful. It is stunningly beautiful. It is one of the most exciting novelties, even if it's not a new watch I've seen for a long time. Don't forget to subscribe and to hit the bell to get our latest notifications. So Christian, as the chief design officer, when you start working on a design from a legend like Gero Janta, what is it like to get started? No, the watch means a lot to us. I mean, the engineer as such is a, is a perfect representation for us as a brand. It really represents our spirit of being engineers, of fine watchmaking, being a company that is very forward looking also when it comes to watch design. But also for me as a designer, Gerald Genta is, is a person that has given the profession of watch designers a face. While other designers in furniture and cars used to have big names, were very famous, Gerald Genta gave the watch designer, which is an important profession in this industry, a face. And he, he became the hero of the watch designers. How was it like to bring this design into our century and to develop the design a little bit further because you don't stand still, you still work on it. Mm -hmm. How was it? Uh, no, when, when General Genta designed the 1832, which is a famous reference we launched in 1976, uh, he, from my perspective, designed much more than a beautiful watch. He really gave the watch a face. This was a watch which was technically very advanced at the time. And what Gerald Genta did is really he created a matching design a matching outer execution for that watch this product design was more than just beautiful it really had a dna it has a strong and very recognizable character some design codes that were so powerful that they would survive the decades to come and that they would survive also the evolutions of that collection to come over the time he created some eternal designs, literally, because we know them. It is the Nautilus, it is the Royal Oak, and it is the Ingenieur. And IWC now, a little bit late, maybe, for my personal uh, feeling. You could have come out with the watch a little bit earlier. <laughs> but it took you, uh, you said before, about almost six years to really get it where we are today. You're absolutely right. We took some time to get it right. We are well aware of the, the challenge and the importance this particular collection has also for many IWC collectors, for many IWC fans. So we wanted to get it absolutely right. So we took some time to, to revisit the design of the original Genta. Not with the idea to, to make a kind of remake. That's not our idea. We are a forward-thinking company. So we did some changes, we, we evolved the design and now presenting a very compact collection of four references. So what exactly did you evolve in the design, not to spoil the design? Because I think this is a very delicate process. Mm -hmm. You are a designer, so you have your vision, you have your thinking about how a watch should look like. Mm -hmm. And of course you wanted to apply some of mm -hmm. Christian Knob plus Gérald Janta. So how did you get the perfect balance? I mean, that's, that's basically the, the challenge we have with every collection, be it Portuguese, be it pilots, that we want to take 
want to stay faithful to the DNA of that collection, but still introduce something new, something that, that, that forms an evolution. And the way we did it with Agenda Design is that we really carefully studied, okay, this is the essence, this is the face we want to keep. It should be recognizable as Agenda Design with a prominent bezel, with the shape of the case, with a characteristic dial. But from there, we found a couple of points where we could work on, especially the variability of the piece. So we put a lot of efforts really getting the ergonomics better, making the watch closer to your wrist, making the watch better fit on smaller wrists, making the transition between the case and the bracelet more smooth and fluent. So this requires a lot of time, lots of prototyping, but in the end we have a very convincing result that doesn't mess with the original DNA of the product. You also started to polish uh, the watch a little bit on some parts. You're absolutely right. We put a lot of efforts in the finishing of the bracelet in the case as such. It's such a beautiful case. It's such a sculptural case. And we use different surface treatment like satin finishing and polishing to emphasize the beauty of that case even more. Especially the polished edges give a very defined, very precise line to each detail and make the case look even more stunning and fascinating with these very accurate lines that have the, the polished facets. Some of our viewers probably will ask the question, why didn't you use a clasp with a microfine adjustment? And I think it was a design decision to stay slimmer and to have that perfect tapering from the watch head down to the butterfly clasp. You're absolutely right. I mean, this was a discussion in the development team. You know, we have a fantastic adjustable clasp in our portfolio. Have, I think you have the best one. <laughs> but in the end, also, we decided for beauty. And, and we are convinced that actually the overall proportions of this 40 millimeter watch are so slim, are so fine, are so elegant, that we are convinced that our, our customers would prefer the most subtle and the most refined solution also on the clasp side. We decided for a butterfly clasp, which sits nicely centered on the back of your wrist and with a very delicate uh, IBC logo, finishing off this very understated and very clean design of the product. The watch also features a soft iron inner case, so there is a protection against magnetic fields, so you stayed very true to the past of the watch. There was no thinking about making a see-through case uh, or a see-through case back. No, the, the, that's, this was absolutely not an option because we learned this from all the vivid discussions we had with our collectors, with Adam C owners, with, with Adam C fans over the last couple of years, that there is a very strong opinion about having a closed back and a soft iron inner case. So this was an absolute must from the very beginning. The dial looks very much as the dial looked in the original piece. How difficult is it to manufacture such a dial? And the next question I also want to ask you, why did you specifically choose three colors mm -hmm. and not other colors than those three? Mm -hmm. so we put a lot of efforts in getting the dial balance right. A product like the Ingenieur with a very sculptural case needs also a dial that really can balance out in terms of three-dimensionality, in terms of detailing. So to get the, the typical texture on the dial, what we call the grid texture, to the right proportion to integrate the model logo required a lot of effort, a lot of, lot of different trial and errors really to balance this out. And then in the end, when it comes to the colors, it was very clear for such a pure and forward-looking product. We wanted to have the silver and the black dial, so that's a given. But we also integrated the Tanium story, which is very close to the idea of, of being engineering, also our own heritage as being one of the pioneers in titanium watches. So this was also a must. And then we wanted to complement this with a more powerful color, a color that pops out. So we decided for aqua, a kind of blue-green color that gives a fantastic play with actually the polished steel of the case. Did you and look at the Rhine River or what did, uh, what, where came the ins inspiration from? <laughs> it's very you have to know when you are in Schaffhausen and I think Christian 
maybe he has an office where he looks on the Rhine River and maybe he got his inspiration from there. But I was wondering when I saw the color, why not blue? Why not more green? Uh, why not one of the colors uh, many others these days hype a lot? No, uh, you, you're absolutely right. I mean, we've been one of the pioneers of blue dials starting 20 years ago already. We have been to, very to, strong in to green dials platinum recently. Watches. Yes, uh, this is only originally started with special materials, but then rolled out on the, on the steel collections as well. We have we've used many green dials over the recent years, so maybe then the blue and the green comes together. But in fact, colors is not always science. I mean, we as designers, we creatives in such a project, uh, make some samples. We had more than ten colors sampled, and then we discuss among the group, we try the colors in the case and then there's someone saying, okay, what about this color? Doesn't this look amazing? So Chris and I, we said, okay, let's go with uh, with the aqua. We also have to mention that uh, Chris was talking about a titanium version. We were not able to film the titanium version yet because today it is February still. Uh, watches and wonders when you will see this video will be end of March. So we are quite ahead of time. So the Titanium version will also complement the free watches we have been filming, but was not ready yet. We only mm -hmm. saw a prototype mm -hmm. and it will be part of the collection. It's not going to be a special limited or whatsoever piece. No, it's part of the collection, unlimited, same distribution, but uh, it definitely will have its spot in the collection as a, as a complementary uh, finishing and complementary material. Last question, the movement powering uh, the watch is a fully in-house developed and manufactured IWC caliber, 32111? Yes, correct. No, it's a, it's a caliber we in fact have co-developed and we are for completely manufacturing in Schaffhausen. So it's one of our most recent in-house automatic calibers. Extra thin and this enabled you to keep the thickness too 10.2 millimeters. Yeah, that's quite um, something. Yeah. But what is what is even more impressive, the way the watch sits on the wrist. Yeah. It really feels like a very sleek and, and flat watch. That's what we felt when we were filming it. And uh, you guys, you are seeing these pictures now. Chris, the watch has immense potential, of course, to develop it further. Where would you, as a designer, set the limits? I can imagine that there will be a perpetual calendar in the good tradition because you stay very close to a variable. I don't see a chronograph in that watch. I could see a GMT. I could see other things. What, what is, uh, where do you going to direct uh, I mean, the engineer? You are absolutely right. I mean, in, in terms of, of uh, future development, there is no limits. We have plenty of ideas also in the development team and the design team. But we deliberately choose to launch the engineer as a compact automatic collection because it really sits nicely in our overall portfolio. We have plenty of other watches, complications on our big collections like Pilots, Portuguese, Portofino. But what we are missing in this collection was a kind of premium steel or steel integrated sports watch in a flat and variable execution. And therefore, I believe that especially the automatic uh, has its spot in the collection we can't cover with any of the other product families. We decide for very careful and selective distributions. We are not plastering the world with, with engineer billboards, but go step by step via our own community, via our own boutiques to build this up. But if this resonates well with our customers, there is no limits. But do you see a chronograph in our watch? I we, in in theory, yes, uh, we haven't been super successful with the chronograph movements we had available at the time, also due to height and, and diameter, but I wouldn't exclude uh, chronographs okay. for the future. So everything's possible? Everything is possible. Rubber, strap or interchangeable straps? Also here, we, we took a conscious decision not to have an interchangeable system because we are missing this steel on steel watch. There's other collections like Portuguese Pilots, which uh, historically have the archetype of a strap watch where we added bracelets and this resonates well with the customers, but we are missing the, the iconic steel on steel watch in our portfolio. Therefore, for us at the moment, it doesn't make sense to add soft straps for the engineer. I'm personally also convinced that most of the customers decide either for bracelet watch or soft strap watch. If you go for a soft strap watch, you probably want to play around. The only exception is a dive watch. If you have a diving watch on a bracelet, you might want a soft strap when you really wear it over your, your dive suit. Mm -hmm. 
So it will stay a bracelet watch. It will stay a bracelet watch. That's a good decision. Very good decision. I would have been a little bit shocked if you would have told us now that you're going no. to try some. No, absolutely. It's not the, the type of the watch. The exchange definitely. system works perfect on pilots where yeah. we see a great success, where we have lots of colors, where people like to play with a watch. But I think this is a different product where we don't want to have this, where we and the customer, uh, I think, uh, doesn't, doesn't look for such a such a interchangeability and such play uh, it's it's the bracelet is part of the design of the product if uh, mr jenta Gerald janta would still be among us what do you think he would have said today for me, it's very hard to say, but I uh, had the opportunity to talk to, uh, to Evelyn Genta several times, and she reconfirmed to us that her husband, as a designer, was very forward-looking in the sense that he embraced change, that he embraced improvement, moving, changing, and adapting things, and, and therefore probably would also have approved uh, a new design and uh, adapted design to his original after more than 45 years. Well, I don't think that there's anything more to say. <laughs> this is a wonderful closing or a wonderful final word. Christian Knob, the IWC Chief Design Officer with us to present the new Ingenieur. Since there's an ashtray also, we are in the 70s, let's have a cigarette. <laughs> no, kidding. I'm not smoking, I don't know if you smoke, no, but I'm we could. Saying. You see, there are even ashtrays. Yeah. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks for having me. I saw and, that. It was a pleasure. Uh, congratulations. I have to repeat myself. This morning when I came here, I was very excited when I saw these watches. <gasps> I really... Happy to do that. Congratulations, congratulations. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned on Watch Advisor on YouTube, of course, where the watches are the stars, as you saw. But sometimes you need us also on your screens to see the man behind and me presenting you the stories. Bye-bye and see you back here on our channel. Bye. Thanks, Paul.